The early Cenozoic was a time of great experimentation in mammalian evolution. As the Earth began to rapidly change in its environment, so too did the fauna inhabiting the globe. Mammals from lines we're familiar with today began taking on new forms as they started evolving to best adapt to their ecosystems. But there were also many mammals from extinct lineages that arose during this age. In this video, I want to tackle one such lineage that lived during the early Oligocene towards the tail end of the Miocene. This group is known as Desmostylia. Desmostylians were a clade of marine mammals that inhabited the North Pacific. They share many characteristics with mammals of today, yet when put together, these characteristics created an order unlike any other. But while this uniqueness helped them thrive in their heyday and reach massive sizes and ranges, it also spelled their downfall as other lines began to evolve alongside them. At first glance, Desmostylians most resemble hippos in appearance. Just like hippos, they had short tails and large stocky legs, and spent a considerable amount of time in the water. Unlike hippos, however, these creatures were almost fully aquatic. While they were known to inhabit inland bodies of waters like rivers, they could be found as far offshore as in lagoons or in oceans. Desmostylians had several modes of locomotion underwater depending on the species and their general builds. Some used their broad feet as paddles to propel themselves forward, and it's speculated that others would also walk on the bottom of shallower areas, just like hippos. Even in the most aquatic-centric models, it's generally agreed upon that Desmostylians would have to come up to rest. Desmostylians get their name from the form of their cheek teeth. These teeth look like cylinders clumped together, earning the group the name Bundle of Columns in Greek. These cylindrical teeth could be worn down to produce flattened tops, and this dentition was useful for consuming a diet of aquatic plants, like seaweed and kelp. Their adaptations for their specific diet was not just limited to the structure of their teeth, however. Oh boy. Wah! Onalaska stylus tomidae, a desmostylian from the Alaskan coast 23 million years ago, was believed to have used suction from its mouth to completely uproot plant matter like seagrass when feeding. It's possible that other desmostylians also adopted a similar method of feeding. Desmostylians were widespread during their reign throughout the Pacific Ocean north of the equator. They could be found as far east as Japan and Russia, all the way as west as Alaska and California. Behematops is currently known to be the oldest member of this clade. First appearing in the early Oligocene, this genus was known for having traits far less specialized than its later relatives. It had jaws and teeth more similar to those of elephants as opposed to the other members of this order. Behematops as a whole had a generally more elephantine appearance, with an imposing stature and longer, thick-set limbs compared to its relatives. Desmostylus was closely related to Behematops, but had additional adaptations for its marine lifestyle. This involved a body that was more streamlined for oceanic travel, even if it made it look awkward on land. In addition, the two bones making up the front forelimbs of Desmostylus were fused together to make propulsion in water easier. In fact, the bones of Desmostylus were less dense as a whole, indicating that this genus probably spent more time feeding while floating at the surface of the water, or at least at higher levels. Finally, this animal had long tusks from its jaws that could have aided in feeding. Paleoparadoxia was a Desmostylian from another line of the clade, and this shows in how different its adaptations were for an aquatic lifestyle. Its limbs on all four legs were far more splayed out compared to other Desmostylians like Behematops and even Desmostylus indicating that they could have been potential flippers for the animal, similar to those in modern-day pinnipeds. Paleoparadoxia had a large lower jaw that could have worked as a sort of shovel to gather plant material as it fed. Additionally, this creature had an extremely large frame that would have made terrestrial locomotion quite difficult, but would have been well suited while in water. For this reason, many scientists believe that this genus was fully aquatic, like modern-day manatees or even cetaceans. Paleoparadoxia and its relative Neoparadoxia are arguably the most derived members of the entire family, and were found near the end of the clade's time on Earth, during the Miocene. Desmostylia is most commonly broken up into two different groups. These are Desmostylidae and Paleoparadoxidae. Members of both families bear many morphological similarities, and the distinction is primarily driven by genetic data. The phylogeny of Desmostylia is one that's been increasingly more clear as time goes on, but there still exist several propositions as to where these animals belong, among other mammal groups. The fact that the earliest fossils of these animals date back only to the Oligocene and that these fossils are distinctive in appearance make it difficult to trace their origins and relatives. 
The most popular option as to where these mammals are revolves around the order Aphrotheria. I've discussed this group in a previous video I made, but it's essentially made up of mammals that are known to have evolved in Africa after its isolation from the rest of the world during the Middle Cretaceous. Within Aphrotheria, the Desmostylians are most commonly placed within the clade Pain Ungulata. Pain ungulates are a grouping of mammals known to have evolved during the Paleocene and include animals such as elephants, manatees, and hyraxes. This placement was mostly driven by the acknowledgement of several morphological similarities from Desmostylians such as behemotops and extinct species of proboscideans and sirenians. That being said, there isn't an overwhelming amount of genetic data to back these claims up, and the similarities could have also boiled down to convergence. Other researchers, such as Cooper et al. in 2014, argue that Desmostylians are more closely linked with the Perissodactyls, linking both orders to a group known as Anthracobunidae from the Eocene of South Asia. In a 2019 paper by Kumiko Matsui and Takanobu Tsuiji that used most of this prior research, however, Desmostylians were resolved to become a brand new clade, more isolated from both Painangulata and Perissodactyla. This clade would consist of previous families of Desmostylidae and Paleoparadoxidae. However, genera such as Behemotops were found not to closely fit with either family and were placed in the clade outside of them. Interestingly enough, the extinction of Desmostylia could have come at the hands of another marine mammal group, the Sirenians. Desmostylia was one of the only orders of marine mammals to maintain a generally herbivorous diet. However, the also herbivorous Sirenians such as manatees and dugongs shared much of their habitat range with Desmostylians, and naturally, competition between the groups ensued. Although Desmostylians had produced multiple adaptations for marine living, they did not possess the same specializations the Sirenians had for a fully aquatic lifestyle. As a result, they could not exist in the same niche for long. Surely enough, the clade died out during the late Miocene, around 7 million years ago. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. I'd like to thank user General Dissatisfaction for suggesting I make a video on this topic during my last upload. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more animal related content like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can be alerted to future uploads. Also, if you guys have a topic you'd like me to address, please leave it in the comments and I might address it in a future video. Once again, I'm really happy about all the recent support I've been getting, and I'll try to make new videos once a week for this channel so I can spread more animal knowledge to you guys.